All right, so we left off and, uh, you know, we like to clean the house, okay? So one of the things we uh, recommend for sure is a pre-scaling rinse. And that's really, you know, one of the cornerstones. Even when we, t we train docs in ozone, uh, ozone therapy and dentistry, one of the most important things, we like that antimicrobial agent. We're really not big fans of chemicals. That's why uh, ozone water works so well. You know, ozone, ozonated water being a uh, water alone, being a super solvent itself, the ozonated water itself will entrap the ozone and release it uh, in the, uh, the sulcus itself and really debulk that biofilm, that debulk the biofilm. And the concept here is that by debulking that biofilm, you know, we were irrigated out. We use a Viajet system. We make our ozonated water. And we make ozonated water with distilled water. So remember, distilled water is dead water, okay? It has a bond angle of 101 degrees. Uh, healthy water is about 106.5-ish degrees. That's kind of good spring water, you know, heavily fluorinated. No, only kidding, okay? But uh, that's healthy, you know, good water. Interesting thing with ozonate, when you know ozonate water, it pops those bond angles out to 109.5, and that allows the water to stack on itself, becomes a perfect tetrahedron, which makes it a perfect perfect solvent itself. So it entraps the ozone, so it breaks up the biofilm, uh, and also rinses out uh, the pockets of the cell. Because once again, what you're trying to do is really eliminate, when you go in there mechanically, it's really creating a septicemia or bacteremia in the patients that are susceptible. And here in the biologic world, you see a lot of people that have immunologic issues that you don't want to challenge. And so what's important is that when you're breaking up biofilm, that you have a strong oxidizing, uh, oxidizing agent, oxidizing, oxidative agent, sorry. And that's, of course, recommended from the American Dental Association, so it must be right, okay? So uh, periodontitis, they call it an archetypical biofilm disease. And what's important about that is, yes, it is a biofilm disease. You have to get through the biofilm to get to the pathogenic forms below that. And you need a good oxidizing agent. We found that ozone, of course, meets that without any toxicity or side effects or chemical agents. And this was an early study done on the efficacy of ozone uh, using ozonated water where we had bacterial exposure to ozonated water. Distilled water really had no effect, maybe a little osmolarity change. Ozonated water, instant exposure, had some swelling of the membranes within two minutes all the bacteria were obliterated. But what's more important that came out of this study was that distilled water and water itself really had no effect on biofilm, where ozonated water itself really washed the biofilm away and obliterated the biofilm. And of course, the last was fluorescent microscopy, where you had distilled water with the blue shows high vitality of bacterial forms, and we see exposure to just ozonated water at a very low concentration of ozone had a very positive effect on the bacteria. All the fundamental things we know, but important that came out of here is really the fact that and safely you can eliminate biofilm to get to the pathogenic bugs down below and treat them, uh, you know, as also. So. Of course, after your irrigation, you know, you're preventing that. You get there with mechanical debridement. You do your, your scaling, your curatage. Uh, the academy does not recommend root planing. I mean, even though, remember, dental school, the guy come by with the explorer, oh, just slightly a little too rough right there. Scrape it away. No, root planing um, is a recommendation that it's really not uh, important. More curatage, you know, cleaning up those root surfaces themselves and not necessarily making them like a mirror surface. So you get there, curatage things out. And of course, integration and integrative approach with the patient as a co-therapist. And this is one of the other real important factors is, is that the patients that come in that aren't their best advocates, okay, are the problematic patients themselves. I mean, we deal with complex issues, especially, you know, in our biologic world, that the patients really can't help themselves. There's no way we can help them, okay? All we can do in our interpretation of the biologic dental world is that we help them for them to help themselves and they heal themselves through the healing process okay we help the patient heal themselves but they must ultimately do that for themselves so we give them you know instructions how to do things you know you make them aware in our biologic world which I'll discuss in a little while you know we get the patient intimately involved in getting into the biologic experience of maintaining their oral health that they're committed to that and they help themselves okay 
And of course, you know, all the tools, you know, the brushing, the flossing, I mean, pro, you know, uh, proxy brushing, and then using non toxic oral rinses. Uh, we make uh, frozen ozonated water. We give jars of ozonated water to our patients to help them. And also uh, using things like Perio Clear and, of course, tooth and gum tonic are awesome herbal formulas to help the patients keep their consciousness elevated and keep things clean as possible. Another wonderful tool using oils, okay, uh, ozonated uh, olive oil is an incredible, incredible tool for your patients to clean up any kind of deeper, more advanced periodontal conditions. Really helps control that periodontal infection itself, gets it under control rapidly. All they do is they can brush and floss with that oil, and it really, really can starts controlling the infection very quickly. Home care irrigation, you know, it's not so much the pockets. So, you know, we don't get hung up on the pocket depth. It's just maintaining the proper, you know, proper health in the pockets themselves, keeping that biofilm mature. And one of the best ways, once again, it's irrigation. You know, rinsing things out. You know, you got to get there mechanically. But one of the wonderful things is these shower heads. I mean, when they're in the showers, man, have this hookup. You know, irrigate the hell out of your mouth. You know, get things washing in there. Okay. Once again, using those tonic rinses and all that little little trick here. With this little irrigator, just load up on some of this tonic. We have them, even iodine if you want to use that. It's very low concentration. I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, that is certainly a big disinfectant because I, the iodine can be tricky if you have thyroid issues, to say the least. So little irrigators, once again, elevating the patient's consciousness of just keeping their mouth clean, especially when they're doing, you know, a multitude of different, you know, you finally get them stable, you're doing prosthetics. Prosthetics are based, to me, on, yeah, our cool stuff that we do, but then maintaining it over a long period of time. Keep the damn thing clean. You know, home care, you know, we can do oil pulling, you know, people are into all these kind of cool things. You know, there's uh, skinny oil, which is awesome stuff. That's a great oil puller, okay? You have the patient just suck on, suck on the oil, let it soak around and spit that out. You know, what's important also, vitamins and minerals, talk to them about nutrition, learn about some fundamental things about nutrition. What the hell are vitamins for? What are minerals for? You know, things like supporting the bone. Well, let's talk about for trace minerals. For you guys alone, living in the mercury world, you know, well, I'm mercury free. Well, you're never mercury free because do you take mercury out? Yeah, so you're exposed to that. Every day, you should be taking a trace mineral supplement, okay? Supplement yourself with trace minerals. That is so critical because you look at the periodic table, you look at all these toxic metals, guess what's next to them? All the things we need normally. And if your body is, you know, it's going to say, well, I can't find this, I can't find sodium, so I'm going to suck in some mercury. So every day, get some good trace minerals and vitamins in you. And another thing where our patients there, we always recommend how we're going to rebuild our bone. Okay, you know, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is really fundamentally a nutritional issue. You know, your, your body, your, you know, your blood's going to rob everything as you become more acidic in life, okay? Acid builds up. Your body's going to try to buffer itself. How does it do? Where's it going to get the buffering agents from? From the bone. So we always think about alkalinizing in a safe, safe manner. When you alkalinize your body, what are you alkalinizing? You're not alkalinizing your blood. Well, that's the big thing today. I want to be alkalinized, man. I don't want to get cancers and all this stuff. What you're alkalinizing is your extracellular matrix, that allows your tissues to become more alkalinized. And we'll talk about the matrix in a little bit. But what's important there is being in an alkaline state. But number two, simple things like horsetail tea. That's a great substrate, fantastic substrate for restructuring bone. What's another great trick for you know, osteoporosis or problems with the jaw? Bone broth. Everybody familiar with bone broth? Check it out, man. I mean, that's awesome for your pay. That's what I recommend to all the patients. Instead of taking, you know, chalkboard or, you know, sheetrock and trying to digest the calcium, that's a waste of time. You know, the calcium, the, the calciums and all that stuff, you take those tablets, you can't get it in. But you do that bone broth thing, you get some you know, good organic bones and you boil them slowly over a couple of days. Man, that's rocket fuel for your bones because it can get into the cells. Because remember, for you to absorb anything, you have to get it in. So when you have the lining, you've got your small intestines where you absorb everything, you have one epithelial cell. Through that epithelial cells, everything nutritionally has to be transported through it. If you take elements that can't get through that cell membrane, you're just going to poop it out, man. 
So that's why you take you know, bioavailable nutrition so it easily is transported through the cell membrane epithelial cell, actually brought through the cell itself, transported down to its base through the base of membrane into the extracellular matrix, then off into the circulatory system. So that's when they're talking about bioavailability, things that can easily be transported through cell epithelial cell membranes. And you can take all calendulas, awesome aloe vera, turmeric, it's another wonderful element. Uh, every day, a little turmeric, curcumin is wonderful for you. And just watch out, I guess, for the green tea. You may have an antioxidant, but it will kill you with the metals in it, okay? So, of course, an anti-inflammatory diet. There's a lot of great recommendations out there as far as anti-inflammatory diets. You know, all the things that we, we kind of know about, you know, um, salmon, beets, of course. Beets are wonderful, too. Why are beets so great? They pretty, hmm? Well, beets produce nitric oxide, okay? Why is nitric oxide so important? Keeps the vascular system opening up, okay? So that's always good. Beets are good, very simple. Take your, your beautiful red beets there, clean them up, put a little olive oil on them, a little salt, put them in the oven for a while, just slowly bake them off. You need some of that? Awesome, man. That's good for you. I'm not a fish fan, but, you know, anything that's barbecued is good for you. Trust me on that, okay? That works, but down south, anyhow, that and grits will work certainly well for you, okay? So anything colorful, of course, is, is great. And xylitol, you know, xylitol is a big thing. You know, basically what it is, it's a sugar substitute, what it does, it really starves the bugs. I mean, that's what it's kind of doing. The bugs eats it, you know, and it thinks it's getting sugared, and it's not, so it's killing it that way. So basically, you know, it's a sugar substitute um, that way. You know, of course, stevia is another sugar substitute. I mean, guide your patients away from all the white things and sugary stuff. Sugar is poison, man. I mean, we love it. But it really, really is, is a you know, toxic, you know, addictive substance, to say the least. And you know, a lot of the chronic diseases are based on fermentation, burning sugars. So you certainly, God forbid, cancer. I mean, the first thing you do, you get off and get on a ketogenic diet. Okay, you get the sugars, you got to cut them off because these cancers thrive on sugar. That fermentation, that fermentation. Fermentation is burning sugars at a dirty rate versus an oxygen-based metabolism, which produces what? Oxygen is important. ATP cycle, what? 36 ATP. You're up functioning. You're using oxygen properly. When you shift, you're becoming more acidic, less oxygenated. You shift into a fermentation process. This is where you see these patients come in that are chronic fatigue. They're producing what? Maybe 2 ATP, but they're burning sugar, and with that comes all the dirty oxidative products associated with that. Okay? And the classic one, baking soda and salt. There's a methodology to that. The salt you know, pulls things out and the baking soda neutralizes the acid because remember, periodontal disease in a classical thinking model is very acidic. Very, very acidic process, low pH, producing a lot of protons, and that tends to neutralize it. Baking soda and salt, it's all classic. And the bottom line with all this, this is uh, talk about water. This is what happens when you drink New Jersey water. I'm telling you, forget about it, you know what I mean? Hey. So, if you don't, <laughs> the problem is, you know, like I said before, if they don't clean their damn mouth, it, what the hell's the difference? It, you know, all the cool things we do, if they don't maintain and keep their mouth clean with all the things we talk to them about, how important it is, all the work means nothing. It goes down the tubes. And this is, you know, just keep your records on that. And, of course, uh, subsequent appointments, whenever that might be. Okay, you determine your time. You know, how the patient responds. You know, they're doing all their homework. And, you know, you can use the microscope, all the tools we spoke about before. And if you think they're safe to release, then give them a time period. What we do, once we get them normalized, whatever that might mean, stable, we give them a month off. They come back in a month. If they check out good, then we'll spread them out, spread them out, spread them out from there and see how the, you know, it works with them. Once again, we customize our recalls specifically based on what their needs are. I don't treat to insurance companies. I don't do that. That's a mistake. If you don't want to be treated from an insurance company, you have to go someplace else. We're treating you, okay, for what you need, okay? So initial therapy endpoint, you know, and all the risk factors are down, they're behaving, the tissue looks good, and you can release them into the world once again, okay? There we go. And maintenance, once, once maintenance phase, once again, they said typically three months. I'm not a big believer in that. What they need is what they should get, 
And of course, if all else fails, surgery. Oh, that's just some shivers up my spine, that type of surgery. We used to do those. We don't do it anymore. Anyhow, so, you know, it was a determined if that has to be done, you just guys, you got to do it. Surgery is a problem. So we got all the kind of really cool tools, okay? Lenap. Anybody do Lenap here? There you go. You like that? It is good, okay? Lasers, laser work, you know, for reattachment. So we're using different technologies today to bring into the office, which is awesome. And there's something, anybody use a perioscopy? So you have a third hand, huh? Very technique sensitive. It's like, you know, this is wonderful. This is where you actually take a little camera, you go down to the sulcus, and you can actually see all the stuff that we normally miss anyhow, okay? Which is always important. It's like using loops or using your CEREC machine and say, ooh, that was some prep I made. Anyhow, so perioscopy is available to you, okay? So that's kind of the, the foundation for where the academy comes from. Very traditional a lot of ways, but thinking different in other ways. So my model I'm going to present to you now is a little bit different. Utilize oxygen ozone therapy for healing a periodontal disease for healing, okay? So we're really going to get out of the box a little bit. We're going to think in a pure biologic sense, okay? We're thinking biologically now because I want you to totally twist your minds today. And this is the way we think, you know, what the hell is going on with these patients? What, what are we really, really dealing with? So let's keep in mind our friend. We love the epithelial cell. I know every one of you loves the epithelial cell. It's so important to us because you know what? If our epithelial cells are happy, functioning, they're getting good nutrition, they're pooping and peeing, they're not constipated, they're getting good information, that is going to reflect on what we see clinically. Our job is to nurture and take care of our trees, which are epithelial cells. Epithelial cells. So when you think about a cell, you know, when we're speaking it, it's really a morphologic abstraction. Okay, it really is a reflection of the environment it lives in, what ecosystem it lives in, what its job is. So cells changed based on the ecology. The ecology is appropriate and good. You can have a happy, healthy cell doing its job. As it shifts and wanes, become more acidic, less oxygenated, things aren't functioning right, it will reflect that. So, in our model, especially in dental school and medical school, we're all taught linear thinking. If that margin wasn't perfect, you suck. Okay? Oh, I love my margins, okay? So it's very, very linear, linear thinking. Going back, you know, Galileo, Virchow, you know, we're just an organism, we're just basically a machine. We're a machine, okay? Lock and key effect, remember that? Lock receptors, you know, key receptors, fantastic. Fantastic reactions, okay? So we got a bug, you know, the drug that kills the bug, immediate reaction, wow, we can see that clinically. Well, that's fine, that can be easily objectified. But the problem we're dealing with today is different than our ancestors, even dentistry. You know, the world has changed. We're dealing in a different environment. We're seeing patients that are living longer, but also dealing with what? We're dealing with chronic diseases. We're dealing with things like tumors. So that really isn't a linear world at all. It's a different world we're dealing with, so we have to think differently, okay? When you think about human biology, okay, us functioning, it's amazing how the human body functions. We know so little in reality. We know a lot, but we know so little. We are the enormous webs of webs, okay? We are a vast, intricate, energetic network. Everything is connected. You are just one being, okay? Your body doesn't know a nose. It doesn't know ears. It doesn't know anything. It knows itself as one, one thing. Everything is connected to everything else. Like the spider web, you touch one string, it affects the entire web itself. And we are a kaleidoscope, constantly changing. But if one thing changes, everything changes. You hurt your little toe. You get out of bed, you stump your little toe. Ugh, number one, the agony. When you get past that, you hurt your toe. You start limping. All of a sudden, your hip hurts. Okay, then it goes up your back and your neck and you're like this a week later. Okay, we're but a kaleidoscope. 
And biologic systems are amazing, and we have to think biologically because that's really the basis for what we are. It's not linear. We're highly interlinked, okay? We're open energetic beings. The energy flows through our body depending on the demands that are necessary, okay? And we're free to exchange energy depending, once again, on what our needs are. So energy flows through a biologic system. So open, open energy itself. But the most important thing in any biologic system is the input of information, Information, okay? Information is the most suitable energy carrier for triggering local and far ranging interactions. Meaning that your body is continuously talking to itself. There's a clear language, there's a regulatory system that is well balanced and coherent. The autonomics. That gives information to cells. Now, we love our epithelial cell, but epithelial cells are great. They hang out together, they cuddle, they do all kinds of stuff. But if they're given wrong information, they do stupid things. Okay, given toxic information, they're going to produce bad proteins and start to morphologically change based on the information they're giving into what we consider even cancers today. So when you think about it, our body's really working at light speed, okay? Okay, we have these random messages and responsive receivers that are interpreting these things. We're getting great responses. So you have these molecules flying at light speed that fly through a wet medium. We're a big, hot, wet bag. How the hell does that work? It's quantum biology. How does this information travel in the little wet bag that we are? So, when information flows right, in this example, we have a healthy liver. Hey, great, fantastic. Normal cells are functioning right. But when it starts to receive noise, the toxicity builds up. You become more acidic. Okay, your microflora is changing. Your microflora is not functioning right. It's not talking to itself either. It's producing weird things too, which it normally doesn't. You wind up with a lot of bad information, bad noise, and healthy, in this case, liver. And you wind up with something like cancer. Information is important. So when we start thinking about the oral cavity, we think about the integrity of the cells, which reflects into the tissue, and it's an ecological thing. If you start thinking different, you're thinking ecologically, bio biologically, you start thinking different on how we can manage these tissues. Okay, how we can get a good reflection. Body ecology, body ecology, the human microbiome itself. So we are the ultimate super organism. We are amazing. We are amazing. Well, you know, that 10% we've been trying to figure out and nurture forever, okay, kill all the things, but 90% of us is microbes. So maybe we should start thinking about how the hell do we take care of them better, and now we reflect on the 10%. There's an intimate, absolute relationship between the microbes that you carry with you and how we function, think, and function every day, once again. We're a bunch of ecosystems. There are no two ways about it, thinking ecologically. You know, ever hear the term, death starts in the bowel? That's one of our first lessons at work, right, Brian? At school, death starts in the bowel, Okay. Because what's so important about maintaining the gut healthy, which is part of the oral cavity? That is where what lives? Your immune system lives. 70, 80 percent or more of your immune system, your perception of the world, is in your gut. And depending on how healthy it is in there, that reflects on your immune system itself. So keeping the oral cavity, the, the bowel healthy, it reflects in your blood and all the higher systems itself. That's why in dentistry today, man, if you start thinking differently, you get into the biologic concepts, boy, you have such amazing tools to help your patients beyond just filling a hole in their teeth. You really affect their health and wellness in the long run. So I know last night you're all hanging out in Savannah getting crazy, and all of a sudden it was like one of those group things. How does information get to a cell? Yeah. Did you hear that last night? Okay. How did nutrients get to a cell? Oxygen. You know, how did, how did the poop and pee get the hell out of there? You know, because if these things are functioning correctly, we have what we call health. Okay? Well, all this is through a highly regulated system called the extracellular matrix or your biologic terrain. Now, the old school used to be Pasteur. It's the bugs. It's the bugs. Mochon, it's the terrain. It's your ecology that dictates your health and wellness. 
Okay? Every function in the human body, every living process, has this matrix involved in one way or the other. If you took everything away in the human body except the extracellular matrix, you'd have a perfect outline of yourself. Perfect. That's how intimately related it is. This is why when you do an inferior alveolar block, your little toe feels it. This is the unifying field of your biology. This matrix holds everything together. All nutrients, oxygen, everything cells need have to flow from the capillary, the lymphatic system, through this matrix, then goes to the cell. And just the opposite, the metabolic byproducts, the byproducts of the cell, the nutrients or whatever's coming out, hormones, information, whatever its job is, has to flow through that matrix back into the system and be distributed where it has to go. So what we've been doing is thinking, trying to you know, get the cell, get the cell, get the cell. But now if we think differently, how do we nurture this matrix? Because if we nurture the matrix, good blood flow in, nutrients, everything in, and that will reflect in the tissue and the cells themselves. So this is a simplistic diagram, diagrammatic representation where you have the vascular system, then you have this matrix in here. Now it's always interesting, how do these oxygen molecules get to this, these cells themselves? And this is highly regulated and highly autonomic. There's a level of consciousness there that controls this whole system. Nutrients have to flow through here. Water, which is critical, your water molecules, which are your solvent, your, your toxic carriers, okay, have to travel through the system. There's water sieves there. It's an amazingly complex yet unifying process there that allows the cells to become healthy and function well, if we can maintain that. And this is where when you want to alkalinize, this is what you alkalinize because it runs better at an alkaline state. Once this starts to become toxic and congested, it reflects in the tissues themselves, in the cells, and of course, in the tissues themselves. An amazing thing is, is that if you think about cells, okay, cells have a level of intelligence. They think, where's the intelligence of a cell? Where's the brain of a cell? Where is that? In the membrane, exactly, in the membrane. That's where they tell you. Everybody used to say, well, it's a nucleus. It's a little brain-looking thing. The nucleus is where, like, DNA is housed and all that, but they, that's where the protein factory is, okay? That's where they make proteins. The reality, the intelligence of a cell lies in that membrane. If you look at the membrane, it's not just a sheet of, uh, of you know, like a covering like this, this flat thing. It's, a, it's active transport mechanism, passive transport mechanisms. This is how it's linked into the matrix itself here, then out to the vascular and lymphatic system over here. Immunologic action goes on through the matrix itself. Neutrophils, macrophages, T-cells, they all go running through this matrix to help repair and maintain the cells. And, of course, that reflects up in the tissue itself. The com this is one of the best models I've seen of the relationship, the unifying thing. They're not just cells, but the cells into the matrix, intimately woven in and into the vascular systems themselves. So the maintenance of a cell, okay, we're trying to create a good ecology, all right? You know, growth factors, all that stuff goes into the cells, and of course, this reflects on how the cell is shaped, growth factors, differentiation, etc. So remember, the human body is an open energetic ecosystem. There are no barriers in the human body. If you have infections in your face, this is where 3D cone beam technology comes in. This is where maintenance of infections in the head and neck are so critically to be understood and eliminated because it drifts through the entire body, has a long-term chronic inflammatory response that we've yet. So in functional life, we're talking about the capillary, the cell, the matrix itself, and based on that intimate relationship with the microbiome itself. So factors that influence cell biology, the matrix, growth factors, all those cytokines, hormones, vitamins, and other than the basic DNA make up a growth shape and differentiation, all factor in how cells function. But, you know, the amazing thing is, and this is what's great for us, I mean, you're dealing with soft tissue issues, is that the body always wants to be balanced. I want to be balanced, man. And that's called homeostasis. It's woven into our, our DNA, this concept of healing, the concept of homeostasis to be balanced and function the best it can. And we have this biologic elasticity.
It's amazing what we can suffer, the human body can take, before it gives up the ghost. It can take a hell of a beating because we can heal ourselves. So we have that elasticity that we can use our advantage as, as dentists to help the patient heal themselves. And of course, microbes maketh the man. Not us make them. I think they really dictate to us. So in dentistry, you know we have a perfectly ecological environment we live in every day, right? It's a perfect. I think maybe dental offices should be condemned every 10 years, every cycle. I don't know what the hell they would do with it. So you have chemicals, solvents. Everybody remember dental school doing methamethacolate shots. Remember that? Oof. Do you think that's a carcinogen? Oh, brother. So we deal with chemicals and solvents. We're dealing with chronic infection that patients love to share with us. And, of course, heavy mentals and the environmentals that we deal with in dentistry every day. And those really contribute to the dysfunction of our body, which poisons us as well as the patient itself. And it's a process called anaerobiosis or dysregulation of tissue. And this is what we see in perio. So... You know, we're made of really un unstable stuff, but somehow it all comes together to function in a great, great way. But we start to accumulate heavy metals. We're drinking fluoride. We're doing this and that, environmental issues. It can slowly wear us down and overwhelm our compensatory mechanisms, and we slip into the abyss. So it's interesting. When you see what we would classically call periodontal disease, Okay, it was really that process starts a hell of a lot sooner than when we see it clinically. Like any disease, there's an early onset that we don't see. We see things clinically when they manifest themselves as symptomatic, symptomatic issues. These issues start early on down in the extracellular matrix where things start to turn. Okay, becoming toxic, acidic. Bad information, the cells start to change, and we start to see altered cell biology. It slips into this pathologic, ecological drifting area, and then eventually manifests itself in the disease state itself. So our job is, when we're dealing with this oxygen issue, with this regulated, which is bad information environment, ecologically now, thinking a little differently, we're shifting the environment in the oral cavity, or in the body in general, to a balanced, regulated environment where information flowing correctly, we're utilizing oxygen again, and bringing ourselves back to a state of health or homeostasis itself. And we can do that with our biologic therapies. This regulation being bad information, shifting that ecologically, detoxifying our patients, alkalinizing them, removing the pathogenic load, changing the environment itself, refluorinating the oral cavity properly, okay? And we get a regulated environment. And we see this with this anaerobiosis, this regulation process. We're seeing that in our perio or even in ischemic diseases of the jaw, where we see this oxidative lymphatic and vascular congestion. You see that classically in the soft tissue, where it's the vascular systems are collapsing down, the capillary beds are collapsing down, and the congestion is right there. Okay? And this is a case of this regulated tissue. This is osteonecrosis of the jaw. This is induced where the matrix is broken down. The poisons come from zometa. Okay? The zometa goes in and poisons our body, and we have dysregulated tissue. The vascular beds are collapsing, the lymphatics are collapsing, the, the matrix is collapsing, and all the tissues reflect that. And this is, I've shown this a number of times, but it makes a point, this is a gentleman's maxilla. Okay? This is from poisoning from Zometa. But if we use our biologic skills, detoxify, you know, start to support the re revascularization of the tissue, get the matrix up and functioning, we can re-regulate and get that tissue healing. We're looking at the roof of this gentleman's uh, maxillary sinus. So basically, it went from this dysregulated tissue where you have a hunk of bone hanging up, okay, osseous bone hanging out from the zometa. We start to treat it with biologic therapies, okay, changing the ecology, getting the blood flow, all those fundamental concepts here. We start to regulate again. The body can think, get the stuff transported in, and we get regulated tissue once again. 
So this is why we love the integrative model, because what we're doing is we're bringing all different pieces of the puzzle in together, what the patient needs from nutritional, oxygen, ozone, okay, different philosophies, detoxification, drainage, hydration, but also thinking differently. How can I support that matrix? Because once the matrix starts to function again, everything starts to regulate and the body can heal itself, because that's ultimately what it has to do. And this is my other bulldog. It's Monday morning. He doesn't want to get up, go to work. And his work is scratching himself, taking a crap and eating. That's his work. Like most guys. Guys are the same way. You know that. So the pathway to wellness is to repair, restore, and renew. And, of course, putting all those pieces together, you know, the microbiome, biology, diagnostics, and infection, and underpinned by the concept, that matrix, and it takes a little more time to explain in detail, but it kind of gives you a different twist on looking at that. So when you think about it, you know, the patient has the innate capacity to heal himself, and that's when you can change the way that even the patient thinks. So think about healing. One of the things we drive home with our dentist is that you become a dental healer. Okay, a dentist that supports the healing process, and that's a little way kind of different thinking because that code, that essential code for healing on multiple levels, okay, is built into the body, it just has to be opened and allowed to flourish, which is very, very important. Okay, so the principle of supporting and nurturing the extracellular matrix, which reflects in the epithelial cells, which is the made up of the oral cavity. Okay, we love our epithelial cells because this is what we're trying to fix, is really healthy tissue itself, and of course, nurturing and caring for the microbiome itself. So, when healing is supporting periodontal, uh, periodontal associated sort of tissue, now we're thinking about healing. You know, once again, we're shifting from this anaerobiotic environment, which is not utilizing oxygen itself, but shifting that in an ecological manner to a friendly, ecological friendly microbiome of the oral cavity itself. So when we think about this, we think about, when we look at the patient, look beyond just the symptomology you're seeing. Look, think about what the hell is causing this. What is the root cause? Because you can get faked out. You can chase symptoms down the road. And that's like allopathic medicine. Allopathic medicine, we love it, but it also it chases symptomology all the time. What are the root cause? What cause? And why is this patient chronically losing teeth? Why are they chronically having chronic infections? What the hell is going on here? And what's their experience? And what's the biologic underpinnings again? And their phenomenon of being sick. So to me, this is the biologic definition of periodontal disease in my mind. This is the work of Otto Warburg, two-time Nobel winner. He came up with the concept of anaerobiosis. I mean, Dr. Majid Ali. So it's an altered pathologic state of oxygen metabolism. The tissue's not using oxygen right because it's poisoned. Okay, the vascular beds are collapsing down. Epithelial cells are breaking apart. It's a fermentation process. Hell yeah. It's fermenting. It's fermenting process. And you see the uncontrolled oxidative injury. You see the tissue being broken down, the congestion associated with this process itself. The vascular lymphatic congestion we're seeing because the, the matrix is breaking down. You cannot get proper vascularization of the tissue. And oxygen metabolism is a reflection. It gets altered by all the things we're dealing with today. You know, biocides, biotoxins, heavy metals, pesticides, solvents, you know, glycosides. I mean, all those, you know, anybody do uh, spray their house with Roundup anymore? Ooh, that's kind of spooky. Okay? And it results in how we're utilizing oxygen. We're oxygen metabolic creatures. Once we cannot utilize oxygen correctly, we, should, we drift into the abyss. We shift into that fermentative process itself. So with periodontal infection, we see that uncontrolled oxidative injury. We see this dysregulation of tissue function, and it's a perpetuation. If it isn't controlled and changed, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse, become more and more toxic, and those toxins are spreading everywhere in your body. And the ecological conditions becomes more oxygen hating in there, as you've shown you on those earlier slides, and you know, acid loving microbes. When you're dealing with inflammation and infection, it's always acidic. It's always heavily positively charged. And that works to our advantage with certain therapies. So once again, you have anaerobiosis, that congestion, and periodontal infection itself, and ecologically, you're trying to shift that biologically. And of course, we have the oral systemic link and how much we know. That was a big deal for a while, but the reality is, anything that's happening here is happening everywhere. 
everywhere. There's nothing that's isolated in the human body. It's a mistake. So imagine healing periodontal disease with only oxygen and water. Just oxygen and water, the fundamental things we're making up, if we can manipulate it, that we can support our own healing processes using that, that would be a great advantage. So let's talk about some fundamental facts about oxygen ozone, my, my, uh, my world. Absolutely we know that oxygen ozone has great disinfectant properties. It's non-toxic wound healing, and it improves and accelerates wound healing. It activates red blood cells, and gets all the antioxidant systems up and regulating. So you start to get healthy, functional red blood cells and the cells around it. Interestingly about oxygen ozone therapy is that it activates the immune system. All those wonderful things, cytokines, interference, interleukins. But what's most important about oxygen ozone therapy, it has a modulation effect on the body. It's very, very different. It has a modulating capacity. What that means, if it's an inflammatory state, oxygen ozone therapy will bring it down to a balanced state. If you have an immune system that's not functioning, that's under-functioning, it will actually upregulate it. So it has a modulating effect. It brings your immune system back into homeostasis which is pretty darn awesome because that's the key. You get increased antioxidant capacity. Once you introduce ozone into a biologic system like ours, your cells start to upregulate and produce antioxidants. So things like catalase and superoxide dismutase. That makes them more resistant to oxidative stresses, okay? So you really get those antioxidant systems at the cellular level functioning higher. So these are all fundamental biologic things to upregulate our tissue. It has, once again, that anti-inflammatory effect, but what's really cool, it has the capacity to produce nitric oxide. Now, why is nitric oxide so important? Okay, it used to be called endothelial relaxation factor. It opens up the vascular beds. So we're taking all those capacities, the disinfectant capacities of oxygen ozone. Oxygen ozone kills viruses, fungus, parasites, fungal form, uh, fungus forms. It kills all those because those pathogenic forms have little to no antioxidant systems in their cell membranes. Our healthy cells do. You can squirt ozone all over the damn place. There'll be that oxidative stress will be quenched. So we're able to, once again, control the uh, anti-inflammatory effect. Also, oxygen ozone carries a negative charge. That's an electrical charge. Anywhere there's inflammation or infection, it's naturally drawn to. So, but important, going back to the nitric oxide concept, as a byproduct of the metabolism of oxygen ozone, we're producing nitric oxide. So we have the capacity now to get blood flow back and get that river flowing again. And it also has what's called a high redox potential. What the hell is that? Well, life is based on what? The movement of what? Electrons. Electrons. Ozone is a great electron donator. So what it actually does, similar to procaine, if you're familiar with that, it actually recharges the batteries of cells. It donates electrons to the system, and you're recharging the batteries in your cells. Because your cells are like little batteries. It recharges, donates electrons, which increases the effect of living. Okay? So we saw this before. So we know strong oxidizing agent, which again is an oxidizing therapy. And it breaks down biofilm, dental biofilm. And you can see here, when ozone is introduced into a biologic system, it immediately converts to peroxides. So the, the ozone is a, you know, an initiator of a whole biologic process and producing uh, peroxides themselves. And once again, all these biofilms are instantly dissolved by the use of ozone itself. The beauty of oxygen ozone is that the biophysics allow it to go instantly into solution. So the only thing you ever inject in the human body or any biologic system with ozone is gas. It's a gas, holy smokes. The physics are different. It instantly goes into solution. So we know the body, the immune system, is using ozone. We've run that effect. So in the reality, if you're using oxygen ozone itself, what you're really doing is just supporting what the patient does naturally. What the human body does naturally, immunologically, you're just increasing it to a bit. So ozone's had many, many multitude of studies on different types of different pathogenic forms, from viruses, fungus, to its GRD, cryptosporidium, extremely effectual. So in dentistry, you know, basically we got a couple of issues we're dealing with, trauma and infection, and the infection, of course, bacterial, fungal, viral, and parasitic. 
ozone kills all of that, okay? But also it allows for education, once it starts to kill those pathogenic forms, it allows for the immune system to come in and act in an intelligent way to deal with that particular issue. So let's talk about how we would bring ozone into our periodontal soft tissue therapy. Now the cool thing with periodontal infection, when we're dealing with it, we're trying to shift the ecology. We're using all the attributes of ozone that we can. Irrigation, we're using ozonated water. Insufflation, we're actually taking ozone gas and bubbling it down into those pockets, which is awesome. Infusion, we're actually injecting ozone. Total saturation, uh, which we use actually ozone trays over the entire arch to saturate it with ozone. And application, which is called ozonated olive oil in there. So we normal normal part of the diagnostics, you know, that we saw this slide before. I'm going to skip through this because I know Griff is overlooking my shoulder there somewhere. We're good. We're good. Now, ozone therapy itself. So we do the normal standard of care things, okay? Standard of care. But once again, we want to clean the house. I love that picture. Can you give me some flashback, Griff. Yeah, I'm not sure it does. Okay. So the first thing, once again, we're taking ozonated water. Ozonated water is the ultimate solvent. Okay. It's a solvent, and it's also carrying the, uh, the uh, ozone molecule with it and oxygen. It's super oxygenated water. It's fantastic. We're irrigating all the pockets out first thing with ozonated water. That you know will wash away all the biofilm and debulk those pockets so you can safely go up there. We saw this before. We can safely go up there and debride, do all the mechanical work without overloading or challenging the immune system. Then we go back and irrigate again. But now this is where the cool part comes in, okay? This is where we take our ozone gas itself and a side delivery cannula and actually slide it down into those pockets. We release the gas. When the gas is bubbled through, it instantly converts over to peroxides. And the beauty of it is, number one, it sterilizes the pocket. It creates those peroxides that easily travel into the tissue here to chase down those pathogenic forms like the amoeba and all the ones that crawled in there, the spirochetes. So we'll get those. They cannot escape. And what it also does is, which is amazing, desensitizes the roots there. So you're not going to have any post-operative cold sensitivity. So one trick we teach our students is that if you have a sensitive root and you place ozone on there, a certain microgram for 60 seconds, that tooth is desensitized pretty much forever. That's so awesome because you know that one cold spot, like, oh, God, ozone totally oxidizes it and you don't have post-operative sensitivity. Awesome little trick, okay? So we actually use the gas, and we take what's called 20 micrograms. Micrograms is, when you think about ozone, it's just so little ozone in there. If you take a, a 1 cc, so let's say 1 cc block, like this, 1 milliliter section of a syringe, okay, 99.95% of that's oxygen. Just a little bit is ozone in there. And we go down there and just bubble the ozone in there for you know, 10, 15 seconds per thing. And the beauty of it is any inflammation or infection, the ozone is naturally drawn, drawn to it because of that electrical charge. You don't have to overthink it, okay? And here's the instrument that we use with the side delivery cannula handpiece, the very high technology handpiece with a foot here, foot pedal. So you hit the, hit the foot pedal and it releases the oxygen ozone gas through the handpiece itself into the pockets itself, right there to that handpiece. And of course, the, when the diode switches over, that produces that. We can see, this is my plumber, I get to torture him periodically. And uh, you can see where we actually place the probe up into the area and have the saliva ejector next to it in case any spillover of the gas. Up in there, very simple, simple process itself, like that. And what happens is after you do the first time, you get nice, nice ruby, beautiful blood coming out because you're oxygenating, oxidizing it. You go back a week later, you get really no bleeding, no nothing. And this is something I learned from Dave Kennedy about perios. If you eliminate the infection, you don't need much bone at all. And here's the case right here. And uh, we've maintained these teeth for years. This one I had to eventually take out because it was driving him crazy because he was going like this with the tooth. But it looked perfect. Okay, so it's true. You don't need much bone. And we've been treating him for, it has to be like nine years now, I think. He comes to our courses and once in a while talks for us. And he smiles with his teeth and you see the roots and everything else. But you know what? They're solid, which is amazing. Okay. So in all these in particular areas, as long as the teeth are dead. Now, you know, I have patients come in, you know, um, 
I think I need a root canal. Well, you might. I said, you know, you know, if my tooth is dead, uh, can ozone resurrect it? No, it can't. If the horse is dead, get off. Either take it out or get a root canal, you know? So ozone will not resurrect the dead, okay? That's stopped a few thousand years ago. So... Anyhow, so even defects like this, if the teeth test vital, you can go in there, clean them up. Even though the bone, you'll get some bone regeneration a little bit in here, but the fact that you can maintain those teeth. And don't get hung up on the pocket depth itself, okay? Don't get hung up there, because you can get some really nice, nice healing there. But the real trick here is this is when you think about it. So far, every, everything we spoke about the last hour and a half, two hours, whatever the hell it is, okay? We've been going from the pocket, Everything's the pocket. Everything's the pocket. Everything's the pocket. Well, here, with this type of technique, we step out. We think about our anatomy, think about the basic physiology and biochemistry we're dealing with. This is where we took what's called this vascular enhancement procedure. Well, what we did was, I'm going to waste some time on the slides there, we're producing nitric oxide plus a multiple other things that are going on. So what we actually do in this lower microgram is we take a 30-gauge needle and actually infuse at the base where the buckle fold is itself. Okay? We're infusing oxygen ozone gas right on that buckle fold at the base of the of the dentition itself. So what that really does, I put you know six little marks there, but sometimes we you know we, we do these injections and you can see the ozone spread and then instantly disappear. And it goes into all those peroxide, those things we love. Because what we're trying to do here, we're thinking about the vascular, okay? How you deliver the goods to anything with ozone is through the vascular beds. And this is what we're treating. Our world has been here, okay? Right in here in this pocket. Curatage, irrigation, your mom or your papa, everything is in here, right? We go down here at the base over here, infuse about a cc of ozone. It goes into solution. All these peroxides are picked up by these deeper vascular beds and drawn up into the tissue. Because this is what we have to nurture also. We forget about that. When you're talking about periodontal care, it's just not so much the tooth and the ligament, but there's a whole bony thing going on too. So we've gone, you know, traditionally back in here, we go down to these vascular beds here, the conversions of all the peroxides, all those cytokines, everything from ozone comes up and we treat this vascular beds in here, we're restoring the vascular beds and the extracellular matrix and the lymphatics at the same time, because ultimately we have to open up those vascular beds again. So we got nitric oxide, we got peroxides, all those things. So now we're, we're dealing with that. Okay, and then we can individually go in and support and nurture individual areas of the teeth so we can localize our therapies also. So before we get into the microbiome thing real quick, so once again we've been treating everything in the pocket, we stepped out, stuck, you know, we stepped out of the pocket, we've gone into the vascular beds adjacent to the dentition itself, but also knowing, let's say, you know, that the the oxygen ozone will go into the solution, create all those wonderful things, okay? Where else would you treat this? Well, you go back and do like an inferior alveolar block. You put some ozone back there. It's picked up by that neurovascular bed. And now what we're doing is in our periodontal care, okay, we're going deep into the bony structures with the vascular, with the nitric oxide, peroxides, and everything else. We're treating deep in the bone, the same thing up top. You can do a superior alveolar. Just one or two cc's back there. It goes instantly in the solution. All those things are drawn through the deep vascular bed. So now we're finally thinking beyond the damn pocket, okay? We've stepped out, we're supporting all the soft tissue, but also we're nurturing what? The deeper bony structures associated with this. Okay? Because a lot of these bugs can infiltrate everywhere, so we can heat it in a more comprehensive biologic fashion itself. So that's great. So, ozone is amazing. It, it, you cannot be allergic to ozone. It's non-discriminatory. It's perfectly pol polite. It kills everything. But that gives an advantage for us. This is when we can take advantage and refluorinate. We're giving our patients a complete biologic experience. Why don't we do reimplantation and refluorinate the oral cavity? And we do that. After we clean them up their mouth, we always refluorinate and we use either HM before today or Evo Fluor. There's a couple other different products we work with. We basically make a slurry out of those probiotics and actually infuse the pockets themselves, refluorination of the pockets, and we put them on a good probiotic. 
and explain that. Because remember, probiotics are very, very important, which are good, the good healthy bacteria. They have an intimate relationship with epithelial cells. They have to attach to things. That bugs down there attach in those little pili, they attach to the epithelium, and if they're pro-life, probiotic, they attach and they have an intimate personal relationship. You know, when you take probiotics in general, you're typically taking lactobacillus and bifidus, okay? Lactobacillus is acid producing. Those human strain, which they must be when you enjoy bring them into your gut, they're attaching to the epithelial lining of your gut. It's a way to produce vitamins. It's a way to protect the cells themselves. The lactobacillus uh, probiotics producing lactic acid is a micro niche at the surface of the membrane that's protective also and allow things to flow in an intelligent manner. So we always reflornate. What we try to do is give our patients a complete biologic experience there. So we educate them about pro probiotics because once they start getting probiotics in their gut and their old cavity every day, all of a sudden within a couple of weeks they're pooping better. You know, one of our mantras are you got to poop good to look good, and that's for sure. Okay? So getting things flowing the correct way. So basically we take our tablets, crush them up, explain to them what we're doing, that part of this whole micro, you know, microbiome concept, that we're refluorinating their old cavity, because if you maintain the concept of probiotics, you keep taking them all the time. You weed, feed, and seed your GI tract, okay? Keep seeding it all the time. You'll have good probiotics, good bacteria in there. So we refluorinate those that gut there itself. So on assessments and recalls, we bring them back. You know, we repeat the process. I don't have time to talk about ozone trays, but that's something special. And, um, you know, we go back and repeat those procedures. Home care, ozonated oils of fine longevity. You come by, we'll give you information on longevity. They make an awesome ozonated oil. Incredible for soft tissue management. That's great for packing down those pockets, keeping things clean and functional itself. And there, there it is. And those sticks there, those ozone sticks, if anybody has a hemorrhoids, they're awesome for hemorrhoids. I know it's a little off track, but <laughs> I lecture with a friend of mine called Bob Harris, and uh, you know we're in Germany lecturing with Dietrich Klinghart at his uh, institute there, and you know speaking to the Germans. And I really it was the first time I was in Germany lecturing to a group of Germans. Okay, they're very literal people. Okay, you say something, it is what it is. So we're on the stage talking about blah blah all kinds of ozone stuff, and then he says, oh. I says, these, these ozonated frozen sticks are wonderful or hemorrhoids. You, know, you take a piece, take the plastic off, of course. That helps. And, you know, and you can you know, send them home and it's wonderful hemorrhoids. And I said, you know, Bob should know because he has hemorrhoids. And usually it goes, oh, dead face. I said, oh, that went over like a lead balloon. Okay. So, fine. It was lunchtime when we finished. We got up, everybody gets up, you know, everybody goes, up, dun, 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 dun. they're all going out. Holy crap. So Bob and I said, boy, that was something. So we go down, and it's there, and everybody has these yellow pads. And the pads are pretty crazy, I swear. They're just straight right down the line with the pen right on top of it. And we look down, look down. Bob has hemorrhoids. Bob has hemorrhoids. Bob is known as the hemorrhoid king of, uh, of Germany right now, and he'll be here tomorrow. You can buy a visit him and ask him, are you the hemorrhoid king? Please do that. I would appreciate it. <laughs> he is a pain in the ass, but that's another story. <laughs> Anyhow, so the bottom line with all this, I know I took you through down to the rabbit hole and all kinds of stuff, but it really is a, a matter of ecology. Just thinking differently, changing the individual's ecology, you know, alkalinizing, changing the ecosystem, bringing probiotics in there, and making the patient responsible for their own health and wellness. That really does the trick. Because we are the ultimate uh, super organism to say the least and if we think about nurturing those microbes that might be a different way of thinking about ourselves and our, our lives for sure and you know the microbiome is a reflection of you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen